Happy New Year viewers and welcome to Coca-Cola Sports Scene. I'm your host Godwin Eki. You're watching Coca-Cola Sports Scene. Before we move on with the show, let's have a quick look at the lineup for this evening. Coming up on the show, we have an interview with ATS Community Volleyball Tournament Director Rosemary Curry and update you on the ATS Cup Final. We then have a chat with one of our very own PNG athletes and sprinter, Helen Bogan. It will definitely be my mom because she's been my backbone all my life. She's been there always. Also coming up on the show, we have this weekend's NSL friendly match with the Eastern Stars and OFC. Also coming up, promoting the sport in swimming, I will show you a few sporting tips, starting with demonstrating to you the basic different strokes in swimming. Moving on with the show, we now join Rosemary Ikari giving us an update on the ATS Community Volleyball plus the matches. The tournament, this is a tournament here up at ATS, it's a volleyball tournament which our current Honorable uh, Labi Amayu, uh, member for Northeast, had sponsored uh, for, for nine days, which we have hosted uh, before Christmas. And um, we are now here to, to hold a, have our grand final and our tournament ends today. Uh, with our two teams that are, that have gone into grand final, uh, we this has been a first of its kind here, which our member had kindly um, uh, donated some cash for us to run this uh, Christmas New Year period uh, tournament, uh, which we we really appreciated and we are thankful and grateful for that and we want to say thank you i would i'd like to say thank you on behalf of my community and the youths of ATS uh, back to our honorable notice member mr labi amayu thank you very much uh, we hope that you know we still continue to have this kind of sponsorship so with that uh, he so donated our two shields and trophy for the uh, winning teams, also including uh, prize money, uh, with the first prize of the first prize that's going for 350 kina each for men and women, and the second with 250, 250 kina, and the last third prize is 150 kina. So with that, we, like I said, we hope that we continue to have that in the new new year. Uh, hope to have that, you know, continue in the new year to come with other other sponsors like uh, other different sporting sponsorship. While most communities over the week were quiet and preparing for the new year, the Oro community of ATS were hosting the finals of their first ever volleyball community tournament. The event was sponsored by the member for Northeast, Honorable Labi Amayu. <laughs> Youths from the suburb battled it out in the burning Port Mosby Sun as they played for the La Bia Mayu Cup. At the end of the day, it was the team in yellow that called itself Besta that stole the show in the end in winning the top prize of cash and trophy.
that was Rosemary Ikari, tournament director and organizer of the Atheist Community Volleyball. We'll go for a first break. Coming up on the other side of the show, we have the NSL match and an interview with team manager of the Eastern Stars, Joseph Eladona. You're watching Coca-Cola Sports Scene. Over the weekend, the NSL played a friendly match between Eastern Stars and Oro FC. Let's take a look at the National Soccer League of the weekend sports. What do you hope the boys will uh, achieve in the 2014 season, considering last year they missed out on a place in the finals? Yeah, thank you. Uh, this season we have a very good team, uh, as opposed to last season where a lot of our good players left us due to uh, reasons that you know, uh, sponsors came in very late. So, But uh, this season we have a very good team and I'm happy to have people like Michael Foster back, uh, Kelly Jambu. We have a very good coach in Trevaire and a lot of young boys who have been playing in the PMSA Super League. So I'm uh, confident with uh, our team that they will make it into the top four. Um, our friendly game today with ROFC is just to uh, you know, look into our depth, depth and uh, where our positions can, boys can fit in positions. So basically uh, uh, that's why we're having this friendly with Oro and the NSL is starting next week so you know, maybe give some boys some mats fitness after a long time layoff but uh, generally i'm happy with the play of the boys today trevor comes in former png international former star with uifc what do you think he's going to bring into what type of mentality do you think he's going to bring into eastern stars so far i'm impressed with his coaching uh we sent him uh, earlier on to the uh, fifa uh, coaching clinic at lay the academy and he topped the class there and uh, the FIFA coaching directors are very impressed with him and I'm impressed with him in the manner he's training our boys. It's different from the normal training that uh, with the respect that many of our past coaches have given to them. His is more strategic and uh, modern football uh, which I want. Fast, effective, coordinated and smooth football. That's the football I want and he's drilling that into the boys. Uh, I think it's working. Uh, uh, one big advantage about him also is he's played for Hekari, he's coach Hekari, he knows uh, how Hekari play, how they attack, how they defend. I think that's the seven days that we will have uh, with him getting us. In, in fact, he's already imparting some of those knowledge to our boys, how to counter attack, how to uh, defend, uh, especially with very good teams like Hekari. Apart from Hekari, are there any other teams that you think could make a very good challenge for this year's competition? Well, my view about the NSL is that all the teams are very good. Uh, we must not disrespect the other teams. You are in NSL because uh, you want a very good team. The National Soccer League is not about teams that just come and want to develop players and just to play uh, petty football as any other a normal competition. I think uh, NSL has a uh, bigger picture of going, going to the whole league and then going to the World Club Championship. So, if you're playing in NSL, uh, you must play to that level. And I, I think, uh, in my view, all teams are very good. Uh, it's shown in the last uh, seasons that you can't take, because a team is the last place, you can't take them that they're not a good team. Uh, they are very good teams. So, uh, they'll be big. Uh, I believe that this NSL will be very good, uh, competitive because of Lay FC. And uh, I'm not too sure about uh, FC Pom, they have an appeal in place. But last season, FC Pom showed some class and they, they also a very good team last season. And if they come in, they will be a very good team also. So, uh, yeah, all teams are, are good. 
which in, in, in terms of uh, development throughout the country do you think that the NSL should expand? Yeah, uh, there is a review starting uh, next week in fact, I think PNGFA president is coming, uh, Mr. NOFC president, so a review strategic meeting will take place. We see how competitions will align themselves to NSL and O-League and uh, it's my view that NSL should expand. Uh, you know, we should organize our competitions in a manner, uh, the associations in a manner that they all link up to the NSL. And if we can get more teams from the provinces to organize themselves and we represent provinces and, and you know, NSL is, is from representative of provinces, it will be good. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, so far it, it's good, we just need to build up on it. Just one final question. In terms of, also in terms of development, do you think Eastern Stars FC should have a youth team or at least a Pira, Pira base? Well, uh, we are talking to Eastern Papua Carnival and uh, we've also uh, had discussions with the member for Walotau, who's very supportive of us and uh, I think he's, uh, we have assisted in the Alotau Association getting uh, being suspension being lifted, and uh, I think they are organizing themselves over there. And uh, uh, there is an academy being developed in Alotau, so hopefully we'll all link well properly, and the development will base in Alotau uh, and all the way up. And EPC also having their junior uh, competitions all the way up. Somewhere down the line, hope that we can link properly so that. Uh, you know, APC is uh, Eastern Stars is a Million Bay focus team, so if we can get most of our Million Bay boys into the team, uh, that will be great for us. Yeah. Joseph Eladona there, team manager of the Eastern Stars. Stay with us as we have the athletes profile coming up right after these messages. You're watching Coca-Cola Sports Scene, welcome back. It's time for our athletes profile for this week and our athlete choice is none other than Helen Boga. It would definitely be my mom because she's been my backbone all my life. She's been there always. I have a single mom, by the way. She's not married, but yeah, she's been my backbone all my life. And through my all ups and downs, she's been there with me. To my whole family, because they've been supporting my mom all the way through, and my friends. I, yeah, I kind of have friends around the place, so yeah, my friends, friends. And those all supporters in and around Papua New Guinea, especially the Central Province, I would like to thank everyone for making me this far, making me come to this stage so far. And yeah, not forgetting my management and staff of Team Central for being at the back of me throughout the whole sporting team. I am from Central. I am typical Central. Even I don't look like one. It's <laughs> typical Central. My pair, my mom, and ah uh, yeah, they are both from Central. So yeah, I'm from Central. Okay, during my free time, so I, I mostly uh, I'm a pet lover. I mostly hang out with pets, and apart from that. I have my sporting training up ahead, so uh, it's like being at the village, we don't normally have fields around, so what I do, I've been in the sea like 24-7, just try to um, 
make myself, I mean, train myself for the upcoming games and all this stuff. Uh, socializing with friends, yes, almost, um, yeah, just family friends. I like traveling here and there and meeting new people is what I'm good at, yeah. I mean, it's all about planning ourselves into doing something, right? Like, if we really want to achieve something in life, we do everything. We sacrifice for everything. We have to sacrifice to put food on our table every day. Plus, if we are born to play or if we are born to be someone else, we got to do everything in our part to have everything in order. So, yeah, I go to work. At, I almost leave for work. At, as early as 6 a.m. in the morning, and my work finishes at 5, but then I still have time for at least training. If I, if I cannot be out in the sea in the night, I just have to do benching just to take out the day. Um, I actually found out that I could run when I was just five years old. I started competing from the age upwards. I went, I've, I've been to a lot of um, carnivals for school. I represented my school all the way throughout my whole schooling years. And yeah, for two, two particular, uh, my two biggest games are the first, uh, I attended the fourth national games here in Port Mosby and the fifth national games at Kokopo last year. And likewise, I'll be standing by for South past three games. And my training starts in January. So yeah, I can look apart from athletics, apart from being on the track, I'm quite good on the field as well. And apart from track and field, I can play either, I can be on a touch rugby field or on a soccer field, on a basketball field. Either way I go, I'm born to play, yeah. Well, it's quite hard to go to work and go to training, but I'll try my hardest just to put my training times, put everything in order, go to work on time and turn up for trainings on time and make sure, yeah. I'm planning, um, yeah, I'm planning for a big game upcoming because um, it's, I, I quite have a dream. I wanted to represent Papua New Guinea so badly and 2015 is gonna be my first chance to be part and parcel of Team Papua New Guinea, so yeah. It's gonna be a challenge to me, but I'm gonna be trying my hardest to be. Well, my inspiration ever since I was small will be, um, yeah, Mulauna, ever since I was small. I, I actually watched her run in 1991, so past three games, and she became my inspiration then. And I, I've been trying very hard to be in her shoes all this time. And yeah, I think finally my, my dreams are up ahead around the corners. Um, it's been, it's been my dream ever since I was small that I could, I would run for Papua New Guinea one day, regardless of what I do in life, regardless of what what profession profession I'm gonna be under. I am gonna run for Papua New Guinea one way or the other. And what motivated me so much is that if I am given the potential, if I'm given the raw talent, why not I use it other than throw it away to be something else? So yeah. I would rather thank God for what I am today and what I'm looking forward to. And I'm praying every day that he continues to be part and parcel of my life, yeah. Um, maybe I see just failure is never an option. Being successful is the reward of your commitment. Your own your own dedication and your own persistence in progressing in life to see your dream a reality. Never give up. Just look, in yourself, look yourself in the mirror every day and tell yourself that you're a champion because God made you to be one. If there's no pain in life, there's definitely no gain. So if, if they think they have, if they think they have raw talents, I, I, I would strongly emphasize them to come out and start playing stop putting themselves into that 
whole sporting thing because you might not know you have the potential but then you keep on hiding your so-called potential within you and if you don't use your God-given talent he's not gonna take it away from you but he's gonna move far far away from you and the more you think on how to achieve it you're gonna be left out alone so my only message is if you can run if you can play why not come out and play it's very that was Helen Boga, our very own PNG sprinter and runner, and we wish her all the best for this year and not forgetting as she prepares for the 2015 Pacific Games. We'll go for a quick break. Coming up on the other side, we will show you some of our sporting tips on swimming and how you can improve. You're watching Coca-Cola Sports Scene for all your sporting enthusiasts. It's always a good thing to know a thing or two of the different sporting activities. We've included a concept called Sporting Tips, where I plus other professional sporting icons will get to run a few demonstrations for you in aim to either understand the sport a little better or encourage some of our budding viewers out there to get involved. Either ways, it's also a great way to learn a few tricks of any talent. This evening we start with swimming where I will show you a few different strokes in swimming and how it's done. The freestyle currently has the fastest times of all strokes over almost all events. Long elegant arm actions with fast strong leg kicks allow a swimmer to easily glide through the water. Most beginners think that speed comes in the form of moving your arms faster. But just like walking on land, most of the swimmers speed actually comes from his legs. The backstroke. The backstroke is almost identical to the freestyle in that the basic arms and legs kick are the same with one key differences. The swimmer's face is upwards towards the sky instead of the bottom of the pool. The key difference is in the position of the wrist and hand as it hits the water. You will notice that the swimmer twists his wrist to allow a cutting movement and then pulling his arm back, like a pedal to push him on. You might be wondering how a swimmer does not hit his or her head on the wall when they approach it. But the trick is a simple case of counting the numbers of strokes that you have done before you arrive. The backstroke, once considered the fastest of the strokes, that mental has long been replaced by the freestyle. However, the body movements and especially pushing with your arms to clear your head above the water level are the key to the success of the swimmer. Because of the leg and arm action, the breaststroke uses a technique called the frog kick. The butterfly. Technically the most demanding of all four, the breaststroke is true test of a swimmer's technical ability. Most people learning to swim for the first time can easily be put off by what appears to be complicated arm and leg movements, but actually imitates a dolphin. Hence the term dolphin kick. And there you have it, that is how you do the different strokes in swimming. I hope you've learned something of the basic different strokes in swimming. Thank you for watching Coca-Cola Sports Scene. You can check us out on Facebook, like our page, tune into Hotspot for more of the latest sporting actions. Please don't forget to buy yourself a Coca-Cola bottle or can. There's something for everyone to enjoy. I'll see you next Monday, right here, same time on Coca-Cola Sports Scene. I'm Godwin Eki. It's bye for now.